What's up, everybody? Welcome back. This is part six of this series, the final part of the series. This is the finale. The series is done after this. Okay, in this part, we're going to be letting the player die. And as a consequence of dying, uh, you're going to be able to see your results. And your results are going to tell you how far you ran. And it's going to give you the option to either quit the game or retry. So we're going to also implement that menu. And quitting the game is going to go to a main menu. So we have to implement that menu too just to have like a, a nice little bow ribbon on this whole thing. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is fix like this weird little thing that I noticed where like you see how the UI is getting cut off when the size of the when the size of the screen actually increases and decreases, right? So that's just a little consequence of this setting here. Under canvas, you have canvas scaler and that's currently set to constant pixel size. You wanna set that to scale with the screen size. And now this is off just a little bit, so over here, distance text, and just move that over just a tiny bit. All right, and now it's scaling with the screen size, and we're good. Perfect. Okay, so in order for the player to die, he has to hit the side of any building, or I guess just fall straight into the abyss without hitting the side of the building. That could probably happen too, but you'd have to be going incredibly slow. In either case, we're gonna technically test for both. So let's head over to our player script and check for that collision. So we're actually going to do that in the same place that we're doing our ground detection collision because it's kind of the same. You can only hit the side of a building if you're jumping or falling, not grounded, because you can't hit a building if you're on the ground, you know, the top of the building. So fixed update, not grounded. Just below where we're doing this, we're going to start another raycast. Wall origin, we're going to call it, I guess. And we're going to start it at our own center. And then direction and distance are going to be pretty easy to set. Hit 2D, no, naming it the same. Wall hit, physics 2D, raycast. Wall origin, uh, this is going to be vector 2.right similar to our obstacle raycast that we did in the previous part. And the distance is exactly the same as that as well. Velocity.x, time dot, time dot, delta. And then if we're hitting it, wall hit dot collider dot null. Test for the ground. And wall hit collider component ground. ground exists. Then as an added test, we want to make sure that we're not ever under any circumstance triggering this collision if we're landing on top of the building somehow. So we want to make sure that we're always below the ground height, which means there's no way we land it. So if position.y is strictly less than ground.ground .ground height, then we're actually hitting the side of the building. And the only thing we have to do for this is set our velocity.x to equal zero. And since we're already not grounded, and there's no chance of us ever hitting the ground, our velocity will never start increasing again. So velocity will be, velocity x will be zero forever and will just fall forever. And since we're falling forever, we can go straight to the top of our update and say, if our position y is less than some below the screen, negative 20, then that means we're dead. Uh, so we just say is dead equals true. And then we can also, as an added thing, never do any updates if we're dead. So if is dead, if is dead, just go ahead and return. And then let's create that is dead variable. Public is dead. And for sure false by default. Now we can go to the game and actually see us hitting the side of the building. All right, let's get past these guys. Boom, 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 and I landed. Oh, oh damn, that's right. Remember when I said that we're strictly checking when our position is less than the ground height? Well, we have to do the equal and opposite for when we're landing because we don't want to accidentally trigger land when we're actually hitting the side of the wall. So. If position.y is greater than or equal to ground.ground height, 
then we land. So let's try that again, hopefully with more success. There you go. <laughs> that was kind of a comical one because we were stuck in between two buildings, but it worked. Okay. Okay, so now when we die, we actually have to show that result screen that I was talking about. So let's go to our canvas and UI panel, right? Okay. Um, let's make this a bit smaller than the screen so we can kind of still see the background. Um, center it. Okay, let's make that full and some grayish color here. Take out whatever image this is. Okay, a little darker there. All right, let's add some text to it. UI text. This is going to say you, well, it's going to be called text, I guess. It's going to say you ran. Um, let's make it a little bigger. Put it up here. Center it 40. I'm going to use 40 for everything. And let's make it white. All right, and this is going to be the title for that. And then we're going to create a new one, put it down here. And this is going to be the dynamic text, which is basically our distance text again, but it's our uh, final distance, this, geez, <laughs> distance text. And it's gonna say something like some amount of meters that we ran. And then finally, we're gonna have two buttons, UI button. This guy over here, make it nice and big. Text, again, 40. And this one is gonna say quit. And then this button, equidistant here, I guess. Um, this button is going to say retry. Now that we have that, we just got to hook it all up to our UI controller, which I think is here. Yep, yeah, UI controller. All right, what do we actually need? We need our panel, which is going to be a game object. Uh, results. Let me go ahead and name that results. Okay, so Results equals game object. Results. And it's going to be disabled by default. False. Then in our update, once that player is dead, is dead. Results.set active. True. And that's going to show it. And then we also need that dynamic text. And that's going to be almost the same as this. Final distance text. Final distance text. And then same as that. Final distance text. Text equals distance. M. Okay. Now let's hook up the buttons. So we're just going to create some methods for them. Uh, I don't know if it has to be public or not, public void. Uh, one for quit. And this is going to, uh, we need our scene management. So using Unity Engine scene management. Scene manager dot load. Load scene. That one's going to be called menu. Haven't made it yet, but we will. And then we're going to have a similar method for retry. And it's going to load a scene, which is our current scene. It's just going to reload our current scene. And that's going to be sample scene. I think it's called by default. All right. Now let's hook them up to the buttons, which we can do. They have an on click event that you can just assign a method to. So we'll go to the button, scroll down here, link uh, our canvas, which has our UI controller script, which has our, which one is this? Quit, our quit method, and then this other button 
that same thing, our canvas, UI controller, retry, retry. Had to retry that. All right, now we can test our awesome results screen. Okay, immediately got a null reference exception. What is this in reference to? Can't find final distance text. That's because we set, it's inside of results and we set results to not active. So we'll just put that above here and that should be fine. Let's see if that goes away. Yep, perfect, okay. And now we should see that results screen. There it is, 105 meters and we should be able to not quit, but we should be able to retry because the, that scene doesn't exist yet. So I'm not gonna even try, retry. Perfect, reload the scene. There we go. All right, let's create the menu really quick. Scenes, create scene, menu. All right, let's create a canvas like we did before, UI canvas, or just go straight to panel. It'll create our canvas for us. Um, this canvas again, uh, screen space, we'll go camera, main camera, and scale screen size. And then inside of our panel, we'll just create some text, a little title card here. Cool cannibal clone. White. And we'll give it a button to actually press play. Button. Nice big play button. Big text. All right, and then we'll create another controller for our canvas. U, UI controller, I mean our title. So UI controller for here. And we just wanna have one method here to play the game. And again, Unity engine scene management, load scene, sample scene. Oh, I guess this is, I gotta get scene manager as well. There we go. And then we'll hook that button up the same way we did the other ones. Button, we'll grab our on click, canvas, UI controller, play. There we go, that should be it. Let's press play, let's go, let's go full screen. Watch it happen. There it is. That is everything we needed to do. The player can die, retry, quit, play, die, over and over again. We've implemented what I vaguely consider the core functionality of uh, the original Cannibal. You know, we have the jumping, the random buildings, the obstacles, and we can die. I know there's a lot of things I left out that would have been awesome to have. So if there is anything from Cannibal that I did leave out that you want to see me implement in this, I would totally be down to do it. Other than that, if you made it this far, thank you so much for sticking around. Uh, it means so much. If you like everything that we did here, you know, hit the like button. It helps tremendously. Subscribe to the channel. I have a couple of cool ideas for what I'm gonna do next. And yeah, I had a ton of fun. It's been really awesome. That is it for me, end of series. Take care, everybody. And look at that, there's actually a little bug here where you can die and the screen keeps scrolling. <laughs> I already know what it is. If anybody else can take a guess as to why this is happening, uh, bonus points. Bonus points to you. Leave a comment.